All right, we're going to give you a real quick tutorial in SPSS on how to do dummy coding. So remember, dummy coding is with multiple regression models only, and what we're looking for is the interaction between the different levels of a categorical variable and the continuous variables in your model to see if there is some special interaction that is affecting the DV differently than the rest of the different levels. Okay, so another way to look at this is, are any of the categorical variables acting as a moderator? Are they influencing the DV? Remember this, that when you're dummy coding, you got to pick one of the levels or one of the categories of your categorical IV. It has to be a reference category. In other words, it's going to be left out of the, the data set because the results will be able to be compared to that reference category and the number of categories that you do when you dummy code will be one less than the number of levels of that categorical variable. So in our example we're going to make three dummy codings because we got four categories. So the four categories are the types of exercise. One is the control group with no exercise. The other one is yoga, Pilates, and the last one is running. So we're going to set the no exercise as the control group or as the reference category. And we only made three dummy coded variables, right? One for yoga, one for Pilates, one for the running. And all of this data, all the inferences that we can make from this data are going to be referring back to the control group or those that don't exercise. So that's it in a nutshell. It's gonna, we're going to walk through this real fast. Please hold. All right, first thing we're going to do is make dummy variables. We're going to go to, <clears throat> excuse me. We're going to make dummy variables. We're going to go to transform, recode into a different variable. You're going to type in the type of exercise. The first one we're just going to name yoga. But we know that is the yoga dummy coding. We, we're probably going to change the names on these later, but don't overly worry about that right now. So we're going to change old values. If it was a 1, it's going to stay a 1. We're going to add that. If it's not a 1, we're going to name it a 0. Okay, so that's our dummy coding. We're going to click Continue. We're going to click OK. So here's our first yoga variable. We did change the name of it to Yoga Dummy. So now we're going to redo it for Pilates real quick. We're going to go to Transform, Recode, Type of Exercise. This one we're going to call Pilates. Pilates. And we're going to change that, the old and new. So if it was a 2, we're going to make that a 1. And then everything else, we need to add that. And if it's everything else, is we're going to just make a 0. We're going to add. We're going to continue. We're going to click OK. And there's our Pilates dummy variable. Again, we're renaming these after we make them. No big deal. So one more time for the running dummy. Recode, different variable. <whistles> Type of exercise. And this will just be running. Running. Change. So running, I believe, was a 3. If it was a 3 on the original variable, it'll be a 1 in our dummy coded. Add. All other variables are going to be a zero. Add, click continue, click OK. So here are our three dummy variables. Well, again, we recoded them. We just renamed them to be dummy so we wouldn't get confused. So the next thing we've got to find is our centered calorie reduction term. So hold on. So here's the centered calorie re reduction term. What we did was you have to compute a new variable by finding the mean of the calorie reduction and then subtracting each individual from that mean, and that created the new one. If you need help with this, please check up a couple of videos ago. We have a center out of center of variable video. So moving on. All right, now comes the fun part. We have to make the interaction terms for yoga calorie reduction, Pilates calorie reduction, and running calorie reduction. Again, remember, the reference group is the no exercise group. So... Let's do this. We're going to go to, let me pull this down here, transform, compute. We're building a new variable. 
So we're going to call this interaction yoga. And again, we're probably going to have to rename these a little, just a little bit. Don't you worry about that. And we're going to take our calorie, or I'm sorry, the centered. Make sure you use this asterisk. And then our yoga dummy. Okay, so we just made a interaction variable. That's what it's going to check for. So you're going to click OK. And there's our new interaction term for yoga. Okay, you're going to repeat that for the Pilates and for the running. We're not going to do it for you now. Um, in fact, we'll do them, but I'm not going to show you how. Hold on. Wasn't that fast? <laughs> so here's our interaction terms. And we have our center term, interaction terms, or dummy coding. I believe we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and run this bad boy and see what happens. All right, we got all our variables in place. We're going to go ahead and run the analysis. We're going to go to Analyze Regression Linear. Okay, our DV was weight loss. So our independent, that is our centered calorie term. Let me see if I can stretch this out so we can see it. Right, It's our centered term. That's going to be our first. Bam. We're going to go to Next. We're going to go ahead and type in, we're going to put in all three interaction terms with the yoga, the Pilates, and the running. We're going to put that in there. We're going to check our statistics. We need the model fit, the R squared, the descriptives, and of course the evil Durbin Watson test. Click continue. Plots. We're going to check the predicted versus the residuals to tell us if it's homoscedastic or not. And, of course, we're going to run the Mahalanobis. That's going to tell us which outliers to delete. And options, there's nothing there. Click OK. And we're ready to go over and click OK. OK, an important note for the watcher of this video, we have already cleaned up this data. So we ran the Mahalanobis. We already deleted the ones that had the Mahalanobis distance that was greater than the cutoff Mahalanobis. So, but when you run your practice thing, you yourself are going to have to check for the outliers and the homoscedasticity and, and that kind of stuff by yourself. But again, we cleaned it up already. So let's make our interpretations. All right, first thing I look at is the correlations. But you got to remember, correlations in this model are not the definitive answer. Okay, you could have a strong correlation here, but it might not show up in the final results and vice versa. But I'm looking at the significance of weight loss, so the calorie reduction is significant contributor to weight loss. They all are, except for Pilates. You know, Pilates isn't that bad, but let's keep going. So here's our two different models. This one is, the first one is strictly with the calorie reduction centered, and the next model has the three interactions between the centered and the different types of exercise. And our Durbin-Watson is 1.495, I'm going to call it close enough to 1.5, right? Durbin Watson is supposed to be between 1.5 and 2.5. I'm going to say that's close enough for me. So our first model, we have an R square of 3.367, which is pretty good. But when we add in the, the exercise, look how big that is. It jumps up to over 68%. And they are both significant, okay? So let's look at our ANOVAs. Again, the first ANOVA is strictly with the centered calorie reduction, it is significant. And the second one, when we add in the different groups of exercise, it too is significant. Okay, so that basically it's agreeing with the first model. So we're going to look at the coefficients. <clears throat> Alright, so let, let's look at the beta weights. They're all significant. Look at them all. So the calorie reduction by itself is significant. Okay, and when we mix the, the centered calorie reduction along with the different types of exercise, look how big the beta weight gets. It's huge, okay? So that means it is definitely uh, a good predictor of your criterion or your weight loss. So yo as is yoga, Pilates, and running. So with the beta weight, it looks like that Pilates is a little bit better at predicting weight loss than running. And at the very bottom, yoga is the one. But we have to talk about these negative beta weights and what they mean. Okay, strictly for the, in, for the uh, interaction for the yoga group, this means this is strictly those people that were doing yoga. We're going to go ahead and look at their beta weight. It's very significant right off the bat. And it's a negative 0.609. So what that means is for every unit of increase 
in the IV, which is calorie reduction, it looks like they're going to lose about 0.038 pounds. It's pretty good. So the next one, it looks like we're going to look at the Pilates. That looks like that's the strongest one. Uh, the beta weight is negative 0.650. Same thing. And this is strictly for the Pilates guys, that for every unit in calorie reduction, they're going to lose about 0.041 pounds. The last one is the running. Strictly for the people that are the runners in this study, their, their beta weight is a negative 6.3, and that means for every calorie reduction, they're going to lose about 0.04 pounds. And again, we just made up this data, so we're never 100% sure that these results are even going to be anywhere near accurate. But again, this, is, this has been a dummy-coded multiple regression model we're checking for the interactions between the different levels of exercise. And remember, it's all it's all reference to the control group. So you would take these numbers and, and kind of compare them to people in the control group. So that's what this means in a nutshell. I hope this helps. Um, it's been fun. I want to say MGZ out. Co-pilot out. Co-pilot out for the year 2014. Happy holidays on ice. We'll see you in the new year.